Good morning and welcome to the last episode of Small Business Life for 2023. Can you believe that? It's uh, We're only a week out, basically, from 2024 and that's quite exciting but terrifying at the same time. Uh, today we're going to be talking to Nolene Sliney, who is a video and vis visibility mentor. Um, she's from the beautiful Emerald Isle, although she is now based in uh, Austria. So I'm just going to add her in and then we're going to... There she comes. Hi, Nolene. Hi, Victoria. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm, I'm loving your earphones. Or, well, what do you call it? Not even earphones. I don't know what to call them. It's been a tinsel or... Yeah, body, it's, isn't it? well, it's an Alice band, but I think they call them like daily bottles or something. Yeah. I love it. It looks amazing. And it goes perfectly with your red lipstick as well. <laughs> do you have snow out in Austria? Or? Uh, we do. So actually, there's literally like, I'm looking right out the window now. Um, we do have snow like on the mountains because we're quite high up. We're like 1,200 metres high here in the Austrian Alps. Um, yes. Now we're obviously nowhere near the highest, of course, it's way higher than us. But um, we do. But it's actually been lovely and sunny. Uh, but actually, I think T this evening or tomorrow is forecast for more snow for a couple of days and um, so that'll lie on the ground for a bit and then yeah christmas day it's supposed to be like 10 degrees so it'll probably be all melted by then <laughs> <laughs> i think it's the same here in the uk it's about yeah. 10 or 11 degrees it's very bumpy oh, wow. weather yeah. <laughs> i know it's great isn't it exactly <laughs> yeah. so welcome to small Thank business live so it's lovely to have you here yeah. i was just saying that you are a a visibility and video um, mentor. So do you want to tell us a bit about that? <clears throat> sure, I do, yes. Uh, so hi everybody and thank you for having me here, Victoria. I'm really excited to talk to you all today. Uh, my name is Nolene Sliney and I'm a video and visibility mentor and I work with mission-led entrepreneurs. So these are people who have a big mission, they are helping people, they want to make an impact in the world, really they want to leave a legacy with their work and I help them to get out there and be visible and specifically using video i do help them with visibility in general but i really think that video is the number one way that we can connect with our people and um, people see you they hear you they pick up on your energy instantly and um, it totally bypasses the seven to 57 steps or whatever it is they need to see you and um, before they buy from you that's not to say they will buy right away but mm -hmm. it definitely helps um, and i love helping people with this and um, i have what i call my magnetic video and visibility um, basically like my my framework if you like and what i do is i help people then with what i have is my four steps so the number one is mission because everything stems from that like even when we're so scared going back to the mission massively helps and um, and then obviously we have mindset which is super important and um, and then we also have the strategy which again super important and then the last bit is the action so really for me those four steps is what really what we need to be visible and visible in a powerful way and that's also what's going to you know magnetize our five-star ideal amazing clients so just you touch on the, the 54 mm. or 57 mm. points, however many it is, every time I look, it's changed. So it started out at one point about seven yes. points before somebody bought from you. And now because yeah. people's attention spans are so low, it's mm. gone to 57. Um, so yeah. w w what is it about video that changes changes that? Right. So I always use the analogy of an author, right? So let's say you have your favorite author, right? And you've read their books over and over again. Oh my God, these books are amazing. You love them, right? And all of a sudden, one day you see that author and you, you hear it, you see them on an interview, right? Maybe they're on the TV or maybe it's on, you know, Instagram or Facebook or whatever. And all of a sudden, everything changes for you you're like oh my god i didn't know that this person first of all sounded like that didn't know they looked like that and um, but also it literally amplifies the words that they have written in that book because you literally hear them speaking right in their own voice like especially if it is something like it's an autobiography or something like that it literally is then literally taking those words that are on those page and just as i say amplifying them and then what happens is then when you go back and read the book it's again it's totally different again because now all of a sudden you have this visual in your head of what that person's like how they sound it's almost like you hear the words now so this is why for me video is so important because it really does make that huge difference right you can be the best copywriter the best author you can have the best copy 
right? But ultimately, it is completely different when someone literally sees you and hears you. So it's almost like for me, video is the closest thing to being in, in a room with somebody, you know? So that you do get that feel for who they are. And I can tell you as well, a lot of times that like, and, and I'm saying even from my own experience, actually, I'll give you an example. Um, earlier, um, no, it, wasn't la it was last year, um, there was a lady who I came across uh, her stuff and um, I was reading her post, signed up for her email list. Her copy was, oh my God, on point. Like, I was like, this woman is like in my head. She's like, she knows me, right? It was perfect. And I decided to sign up to one of our programs. And um, now it wasn't super high end or anything like that. It was a little bit lower end. And um, now I've never seen this woman on video, right? Mm -hmm. But anyway, I joined her program. Oh my God. Like, I wish I had seen her on video first because I did not vibe with that woman at all. Right. And I was like, oh, sneak, like, you know, what have I done? You know, and um, now obviously, look again, you still, it's a learning experience. And I remember saying to myself, even then, I'm never going to ever sign up for anything again unless I've seen the person on video because that's how I know whether I'm going to vibe with that person or not. And this is why for me, video is so important. And that's why people, as I say, like, you know, oftentimes, for example, even with myself and with my clients, sometimes people will see us once on video. And that will be it because they've already got to visualize what it's like to work with us. They've envisaged that now. They can feel, oh, yeah, I, I could get along with that person. You know, I'm liking this. I'm picking up the energy. You know, I can I can visualize myself, you know, doing these one on ones or being in that person's program, mm -hmm. you know. So does that answer the question yes, for you? Uh that's a great yeah. answer well done yeah. <laughs> that's very, very uh detailed answer that's yeah. great um so when you set up your business what what was it that motivated you to step out of corporate banking and go into uh, entrepreneurship oh, God. gosh yes this could be a detailed answer as well but i'll try and keep it short <laughs> um so for me victoria <laughs> I always knew corporate was never for me. In fact, I always say that when I was a child, there was only two things I ever really knew I wanted to do, right? Um, I knew I wanted to travel, right? I never, it was never for me. I want house and kids and all that. I was like, no, I want to travel the world and experience as much as I can. And the second one was, I want to own my own business. Now I had no entrepreneurs in my life. Like we were working class family and, um, you know, but what I did see was all these people around me exhausted with their jobs and with life and i remember thinking to myself is that it like is that what happens when you grow up and you just you, you go to this job and you're always complaining about and i'm paying bills i'm like jeez no there must be more to life than this right and i was like no and also there was a the little bit of the maybe rebel in me that was like i don't want someone telling me what to do for the rest of my life right i want to be, i want to be the own myself right my own boss making my own decisions so that was kind of part of it but for years, I didn't know what it was I wanted to do. I just knew I wanted to have my own business. And um, now I did end up falling down the route of going, you know, college. And I was like, OK, I'll find a job. And I was in um, corporate banking for years and in international banking. Um, but again, I knew fairly early on this isn't for me, you know, and I was going through the motions. And again, I got to that stage and um, it was about. God, I'm, I don't know, maybe, maybe 13 years ago now, actually, because we moved from Ireland in 2010. Um, and I was getting that itch again to go, I want to do something else. This is not what I want. I don't just want to have like a job. I want to do something that makes a difference. So then we actually ended up moving to Munich in Germany. I did fall back into corporate then, but it was like, I would say it's almost like my rock bottom moment that made me go, or my light bulb moment to be like, that was like, hold on, I have about another 30 years of this. No way. This is way too long for me to doing something I hate. So I actually, that was when I left. But actually, I became a makeup artist when I left my business, uh, sorry, my, my corporate job first. Yeah. Um, I went and trained as a makeup artist. And that was actually my business for the first few years of being in business. Um, and it was it was amazing. Um, but I always knew that wasn't what I was going to do like longer term. But it's actually what led me into what I do now, because obviously I had a business myself and I was a confident person. I can stand up and talk. I did lots of talks when I was in corporate, but then I was like, oh my God, now I have to like do this for myself. I have to stand up and, and talk about myself and, and sell my services. And that brought up all sorts of things for me. And then also, of course, then as a makeup artist, I was working a lot with um, business owners. I actually ended up working with mostly business owners. I did a lot of branding photo shoots. I did branding videos. And um, it was all good and well, me being behind the camera. And I was really good at helping people be in front of the camera and feel confident. But I also had to do that for myself as well. So, um, yeah, that was kind of the, the journey, if you like, from, yeah, where I started to where I am now. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mm. You were saying that you were really nervous on camera when you first started and basically you were hiding from, from putting your face out there, especially you didn't even have a Facebook profile. No. <laughs> I remember when uh, I actually remember specifically when Facebook came out, which I think was around 2009. Now I was still in my corporate job at the time, um, but I remember when it came out, there was all the big fuss about Facebook. And I remember thinking, why on earth would anybody want to put themselves on this thing for the world to see, you know, who you are and all your goings on, you know? And I remember my partner saying, because actually then it was when we were we were moving to Germany then just after that. And he was like, I'm going to set up a Facebook account for you because no, Lean, you're going, you can stay in touch with people. And I was like, oh, whatever. And I don't think I even logged in for the first year. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then uh, obviously when I started my business, I was like, well, I probably better take this thing a little bit seriously now, you know? Um, so yeah, and I, as I said, yeah, like I had, had all those fears myself of being on camera especially on video like that was really really scary for me to put myself out there on video at the beginning yeah mm. I think that first video is a mm. is a killer the first one's a killer and yeah. especially when you have to watch it back yeah but then it, just, <laughs> it becomes kind of like habit after a while and you don't even notice anymore so. <laughs> exactly exactly in fact you actually end up liking it because it's like oh because and this is actually an exercise i get a lot of my clients to do especially if they have a lot of fears of being on video and i always say right i get them to watch their own videos and of course they're like oh no no please don't make me do that but i say no you're not going to watch that with the eyes of criticism you're going to watch it with the eyes of what do I like about this video? And it is amazing then how they, they go, oh, well, actually, I really liked that and I really liked that. And then their mindset completely changes and they feel so different than going on camera. So it's not about pointing out what you did wrong. It's like, what am I doing right? And then that's a completely different energy again and confidence that you show up with when you, look, when you come from that place. Mm. I totally agree with that. But yep. yeah. uh, so following on from that, we are talking about yeah. tips. You've got a... Yeah three quick and easy ways to use video to sell your offers. Yes. Where do people find that? Um, so you can go to my Instagram profile yep. and just go to the link and they have the, what you call that thing, the link tree there. It has all the links. I think it's the either the first one or the second one actually. Um, so you'll find it easily enough there. So just go there, click on it and um, yeah, you can download the, the link. Great. Yeah. Um, aside from that, what other products yeah. and services do you offer? Um, so I have a suite of offers actually in a variety of ways people can work with me. So um, I do one-to-one. -one. I don't do very much one-to-one -one because when I do work one-to-one -one with people, I like to be able to give them my all. So that's why I only take on literally like less than a handful of one-to-one -one clients at a time. But obviously that's the most intense way people can work with me, you know, and obviously that's how you'll get quicker results. Um, but I have other ways as well. Like I have um, self-study masterclasses as well. Um, and again, for, you know, anybody who thinks, oh, I don't need more courses and things these are very actionable as i said at the beginning i have my force um four step framework and action is one of the number one things i talk about especially when it's something like video you know because you're not going to get good at it unless you actually do it right like that's how you get good it's like if you were wanted to learn to paint or be an artist you get good at that by actually continuing to do it right yeah. or if it's writing you get good at writing by continually writing right exactly. so it's the same with video so i'm all about the action and um, so that's one way um another way i have people can work with me as well i also have um, a monthly membership called the magnetic video and visibility guild and mm -hmm. um, so again that's kind of a hybrid of you know i am in there obviously you know you do a lot of it yourself as well but i'm in there a lot as well we have live q a it's a lovely community actually i really love that community and yeah. um, so i'm really looking to build that actually next year um, and yeah they're kind of the main ways to work with me i do also have by the way something else that i started this year and i'm loving doing it and people are loving it is um i do video audits uh so personalized oh, video audits awesome. yeah because um you know a lot of the time like because so, like, i work with two types of clients some clients are not on video at all or maybe not even visible at all and then other clients they are visible they are maybe doing the videos but they're not seeing the results they want so um that's one of the things i decided to offer people this year is that, okay i asked them to send me a video i watch the video and i give them then detailed feedback on it on how they can improve it um, and also tons of ways by the way that they didn't even know they could repurpose this like sometimes one short 10 minute video could be five different pieces of content you didn't even know and um, so i'm really enjoying those as i say and people have loved them they've said they've felt inspired actually again um, and they're showing up even more after doing these so yeah they're and they're they're fun for for both of us i think <laughs> i think that's probably one of the biggest benefits of, of video is that 
that one video can be repurposed into so many different things. So you can take it from a, a live like this, you could then turn it into individual stories or post uh, reels or YouTube shorts or, or the yes. like. So I think, yeah, it's very versatile. I and even you can turn that into written content as well. I think people often think only of, you know, right, it's written content or it's video, but actually mm. written content can be turned into a video and video content can also be turned into written content, you know, mm. so it's great. We don't have to constantly reinvent the wheel all the time, you know, because that can be exhausting, you know, but it is exhausting. <laughs> and then with a little bit of techie knowledge, not mm. too much, you can also separate the audio and make an audio file out of it, which is exactly. great because yeah. yeah. I just hear more and more people yeah prefer audio to video and yeah. it's, there's so many different learning styles so yeah. Yeah. absolutely yeah Just kill one many birds with one stone so, um, exactly having a nightmare here but the dog attacking me on one side <laughs> and the sun attacking me on the other side <laughs> <laughs> so who, who's your target audience Lenny? Oh, great question. And um, so as I said, I really work with mission led entrepreneurs, right? So as I said, people who they're not just in business just to go make some cash, right? There's nothing wrong with making cash. Absolutely. We all have to be doing that, right? But they have a bigger purpose to what they do. They have a mission, right? And it's to enhance people's lives in some way, whether that be with a product or a service and, um, you know, or they want to do something big in the world and cause a ripple effect now most of the people that i work with are coaches you know yeah. so business coaches or some are, are life coaches but they're coaches of some description and um, i also work with a lot of um people who are in the spiritual um entrepreneurship so people who are like healers i do work with a lot of those kind of people as well um, and again those are lovely people i love working with because they really do have a big mission yeah. you know but unfortunately they're the ones that are hiding the most actually <laughs> and they're the ones we need in the world you know making this difference and um, also i do work with a lot of people who um help animals so do something animal related i'm a huge animal lover myself very passionate about animals so anytime i end up with a client who does anything related to animals i'm like oh my god i love this so much you know and um, but again these are people who want to make that impact in the world they want to you know as i said make people's lives better make the world better in some way well that brings me nicely on to the next question of um what projects are you currently yeah. working on or excited about um, well, there's one that you and I are involved in at the moment, which I'm very excited about, um, and that is the um, Advent Extravaganza that we are involved with, with um, the lovely Vicky Chisholm. Yes. Um, and I actually have my, actually my contribution came out yes. today. Um, it's out today, I saw it this morning. It yeah. is out today, <laughs> yes. Um, so that is um, one of my self-study masterclasses, which again is going to help you to make video super simple right it helps you with we were just talking about content there there's tons of content there that you didn't even know you had you could easily turn into videos today and it's very actionable so that's definitely something i'm really really excited about and um, i do have some other things as well i have another collaboration actually um, that i'm very excited about coming out in um it's mid-january and um, so can't share too much detail about that yet but i will be able to share that in the beginning of january but um i'll just give a clue it's about creating your lead magnet and uh -huh. using video to do it right oh, okay. so video is a super easy way to create lead magnets again i feel like lead magnets and freebies are something people get so bogged down in doing it as a video is so easy so i'll be teaching how to do that and um, and then again on my own side as i'm really looking forward to growing my community mm -hmm. next year so the membership and um, obviously growing my own visibility you know, I teach visibility, but I also have to grow my own. And that was something I really realized this year and um, did a lot of deep work this year, a lot of inner work and realized I was so stuck in my own comfort zone. I was doing the same things, talking about the same things to the same people and sharing the same offers. So I realized, mm, no, Lee, you know, because I'm really I'm a real believer in walking my talk. I don't just like yeah. to tell people what to do. I want to be the embodiment of that as well, because I believe that's what true leadership is. And that's actually what inspires people. So, yeah, that's what I've been doing. And uh, it's it's scary on one hand and also super exciting because it means I get to help even more people, you know, um, and I'm super passionate about this work that I'm doing. Amazing. It's a, uh, it's a really good niche as well. I work with yeah. a, a similar niche, obviously, yeah. I don't do the same thing, but yeah. I work with the, the sorry, the spiritual no, I love people. <laughs> <laughs> I love seeing people's pets on videos. It's so great. Yeah, the neighbors just come home, so he's having a look. So. So I'm cute. sorry if he barks. <laughs> oh, that's no problem. Maybe he wants to join in. He may probably have something good to say. <laughs> uh, so, Nadine, what is yeah. one thing you yeah. wish you knew or someone had told you before you started your business? Oh, 
Oh, this is, I love this question. I, do you know, actually, and I, I'll try to keep this short as well, Victoria, but I did actually write down a few things. So if you see me looking down, because I had, oh my God, yeah, I'd love to say this, I'd love to say that. But basically, I would say the number one thing is that, number one, you don't need anything fast fancy to get started right you just have to get started okay we we think that we need all these things fancy things websites and we think we need all these fancy graphics and logos and all these things and of course they are great to have membership sites even that's another big one i'm seeing so many people getting bogged down in at the moment but they don't even have an audience right yeah. they don't even you know do they even really have their offer nailed down right and these are the things that i wish i'd have known at the beginning and i guess what I would put those under the umbrella of is only concentrate on the money making tasks at the beginning, right? The money making mm -hmm. tasks are number one, grow your audience. If you don't have people to talk to, you don't have anything, right? You're not going to make sales, right? So you need to have people and you need to grow that audience base first. That is absolutely essential, right? And then the second thing is that um, start making offers to them. So again, this was something where I really struggled. So I got to the point, I was super scared to be visible. I became visible, I got over that. I was like, great, well, I'm showing up now, but I wasn't selling. I wasn't telling people how they could work with me. And then I was complaining I wasn't making money. Yeah, because people didn't even know how they could work with me, right? They didn't know that this was available. And again, this is something I really see people getting stuck with, um, is they're like, but I'm being visible. Yeah, but being visible, that also means you have to do the selling part as well. As in, And if the word sales freaks you out, just just use the word sharing and inviting you share your offers with people and you invite them to take a look that's all you're doing and actually that is part of being of service as well i think people always say but i want to be of service but you can only be of service if people actually know how they can work with you and you are serving them and telling them and inviting them is also part of that serving right yeah. so again that was something i got very bogged down in at the beginning and i wish i had concentrated on learning being visible, number one, and number two, selling, right? Because people, and also another thing as well where I really got stuck, what I'd, I'd love to share as well, if you don't mind, Victoria, is about sharing things <clears throat> over and over and over again, right? We think that, oh, I can't talk about that again, right? People have already heard it, or I can't share my offer again. They've seen it. Trust me, they haven't. They haven't. Think about yourself. How many times have you not seen something, right? You know, and again, this is why this, this seven sharing we talk about the seven to 27 or 57 steps but actually what we need more with that is sharing our stuff seven to 57 times because exactly as you said it rightly at the beginning victoria people's attention spans are short right they miss things or they may just not have seen it they might have missed the email they might have missed your live about it they might have missed if they might have even missed your 10 posts about it and it might be the 11th post they see about it they go oh i didn't even know that's great i'll go and check it out you know, or they might have seen your 10 posts and just forgot they got busy, right? Like this time of year, for example, in particular, people are so busy, you know, they forget to do things. They're like, I, I'll go and do that after I make the dinner or hold on, I'll just go and do this client call and I'll go back to it. And they forget, you know, I do the same, you do, we all do. So that's what I would say as well. And again, keep things really simple for yourself, right? You don't need a website at the beginning. Just start with social media. That's your website to start with right and then get yourself a website because for me for example when i started i got a website right away now having a website is brilliant you absolutely should have a website because it is it's almost like your digital home right but if you get bogged down in that and you're not doing the audience growth and you're not doing the selling what's the point in having a website nobody's going to see it right and i, I as i said i really got bogged down in that and making the website fancy but it was also a way for me I, what i call visibly hide right mm. oh but i have a website and i'm doing the blogs but i wasn't sharing the blogs with anybody i wasn't sharing my content yeah. I wasn't sharing my offers but i was like but it's there <clears throat> yeah but i have to drive people to that right so that's they're just a few things i would really you know i wish i'd have known at the beginning and i wish i would have concentrated on because i would have saved myself so much time and pain but also i would have been making money a lot earlier you know cool <laughs> yes, oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, I, I, I don't know the, the yeah. whole website i think people yeah. think i need when i when i, I launch mm -hmm. my business i need to know what i'm going to call it i know i need to, a website i need business yeah. cards and i need an email address and yeah. no <laughs> just no you what you need is the, you need your paypal link or some way of people paying you that's the only thing you need straight away exactly no, that's you it. Like, people to be yeah. able to pay you and exactly. 
to know that you exist and then think that there's a conversation I have quite a lot to say. You have a great website, but do, does anyone actually yeah. know you exist? And can they find your website? So yeah, is Google even ranking you kind of thing? But it's, it's also yeah. then when we uh, have a conversation around visibility that I have quite yeah. frequently with people is, you know, but I don't want to annoy people oh, with my yeah. posts. If you're annoying them, they're not the right people and they can unfollow you. Uh, yeah. Firstly, yeah. secondly, yeah. they probably haven't seen your post because we all know Meta only like to show things to yeah. a select number of people per yeah. day. And so what? You've got to you have yeah. a right to sell things. People don't complain exactly. that Tesco's has an ad every twenty seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so I, oh my God, that was literally the one because I actually did a video about that, and um, uh, maybe it's about a year ago now. And I literally used that example of Tesco. I said, well, nobody's complaining about that. I don't hear them on the, the nerve of Tesco to come onto my TV screen. Yeah, I hear people complain. I got this email from someone today or I got something in my inbox and they were selling to me the nerve. And I'm like, no, that's actually, and what I've come to realize is I, I, I used to do that too, but I've come to realize that was only my own fears of selling. I was actually envious. I was like, I wish I had the nerve to go mm -hmm. out and like, just tell people yeah. what I do because I'm so passionate about it, you know? So yeah, it, I totally, oh, we're so on the same page with this, Victoria. <laughs> totally. My, my brother is, is big into sales. He's very good at it. And, and, and yeah. I always thought, oh, I could never yeah. do that. Yeah. But I heard an analogy once where somebody said, I can't remember who said it now, uh, but they were saying like sales, every day you do sales yeah. yourself. If you yeah. talk to your friend and you tell them about uh, a good restaurant you went to, that's sales. Yeah. And it's it may not be the hard sell or the knocking on the door kind of want to buy a Hoover yeah. type sales that we all think of, but it's still sales yeah. and it's, it's exactly. you know, I think if people learn to speak about their business the way they talk about their favorite hairdresser or a favorite restaurant, it might put them more at ease. So absolutely yes that i love that that is a brilliant example of um how sales actually works you're absolutely right yeah you know and even things like you know dating is selling and you know i don't want to that's a maybe bit, you know but you know what i mean but it is you go on a date or even if you meet a new a new person that you may become friends with like it almost kind of is like selling it's like you know oh tell me about yourself you know and you find out what you you vibe with this person yeah. and then you form this friendship or you know is it if it's maybe a romantic one it's the same thing you know but again it, it is the same and in jobs you know like even when i was in a job i go to an interview it was sales, you know, because I'm like, well, this is why I'm really good for this job. And then also they have to sell me as well, because it's like, well, you know, you know, tell me why I should work here, you yeah. know, and but why people do you deserve my skill. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. You know, yeah. and it is, as you said, everything is sales every single day and people recommending something that they like is still a way of selling. And you're actually that's free advertising for the other person. Yeah. So you might as well do it for yourself, exactly, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so based on your, your, your experience, um, either from corporate or from, mm -hmm. from your yeah. two different businesses, yeah. what advice would you give to yeah. an aspiring business owner? Well, just start, right? Mm -hmm. Take imperfect action. Again, that'd actually be one of the things as well that I wish I'd known at the beginning, instead of worrying about making things fancy, as I said, it doesn't matter, get it out there, mm -hmm. right? And 80% um, done is better than like not perfectly um what was the word i'm trying to say i'm trying to use this phrase that she said um 80 percent imperfectly done is better than perfectly undone i think that was the phrase she used and i was like yeah that's it exactly right because what's the point in having this perfect thing that nobody knows about get it out there you touched on it there as well victoria i loved that about people worrying about the names of things what should i call myself Call yourself anything. It doesn't matter. It's going to change so many times. I think I've changed my title about five times this year. <laughs> Who cares? It doesn't matter. Do you know what I mean? What's important is you're getting yourself out there. And of course, it's not to say, you know, the detail doesn't matter. Of course it does. But it only matters once you are started right that's when you start to tweak that's when you start to refine that's when that's when the websites and things like that are important because then you're scaling right so that's when it's good to have all those additional things but at the beginning just start do it imperfectly put out a post any post right and just start because the thing is that once you've started and once you've done your first video or you've put out your first post or your first offer, right? What happens is then you put it out, right? It doesn't mean by the way, you can never change the thing. You can always change. You can edit the post, right? You can take down the video if you really want to, right? It doesn't matter, right? You can change the offer. You can change the name, but just get it out there because again, that, as I say, that gives you momentum. It's out there. People might start enrolling. Brilliant. That's what you want, right? 
but also it gives you more ideas, right? It frees you up creatively then as well, because it's out there and then you go, oh, do you know what? Then the next time I do the video, oh, I'll do it this, I'll say this instead, or I'll do it this way. And that's how you improve, right? So same with your offer. Maybe the first time you put out an offer, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't even need a sales page for the offer. Just tell people the second time you do the offer, right? Um, you can create the sales page then, right? Because again, you'll have a better idea of, Right. Well, what, you know, I did the offer the first time. A, do I even like the thing? Do I like delivering this offer? Is it like, am I aligned with it? Never mind the people who are joining. You've got to love what you're doing yourself, right? Because that's also what's going to attract people. But also then you start to realize, okay, well, actually, now I'm seeing what people liked in this or maybe what they needed more than the next time I do the program. I'll add in these extras. And also you've more experience and confidence. So you can also then, as I say, then create the sales page with the new things even increase the price then, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then as I say, refine as you're going along, but just start. If you have an idea, get it out there. Don't create it first and then put it out, put it out the idea, see if there's interest there. Right. And then just go, go with it that way then. Absolutely. Agree with that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Particularly around the, you know, you can change anything mm -hmm. at any time. Yeah. I think we're so programmed, particularly when, we, I think it starts in school, actually. We're programmed to follow things through and we go mm -hmm. off to, to corporate and then we have to follow through the yeah. delivering whatever it is, the program is that we're stuck on because yeah. somebody else has come up with the idea. But this is your business. It's your yes. idea and you can change it at any point. And I think we don't, we need to almost reprogram ourselves to stop staying married to ideas that don't work. Yes. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that's you said that perfectly there, Victoria. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and of course, look, you know, it's more personal when it's our business, right? You know, it's, it's it literally is your baby, you know, and of course, there's, you know, we, we have an attachment to it. And, it, you know, we feel like things are personal, but they're not. It's just it's okay. And if you go in as well with this, you know, um, almost like mindset and energy of curiosity and fun mm -hmm. and playfulness, as opposed to it, like, this absolutely has to work. And if it doesn't, oh my God, this is it. And it's the end of my business. Like, it's not like, like you look at the most successful entrepreneurs in the world, you know, and actually, and a great person that comes to mind is um, Mark Randolph, mm -hmm. who is the guy who is one of the co-founders of Netflix. And if anybody, there's a brilliant book, right? For any, I would say, even if you're not, you're not a new in business, read it anyway. It is such a brilliant example of this. Like he says, like, I don't know, I had about like 56 ideas before I came up at Netflix and some of them were okay. And some of them were terrible, but yeah. he just kept going and he kept refining and refining. And even with Netflix, they kept refining and refining, you know, and changing it and going and seeing what people wanted, you know? So yeah, like, as you said, don't get too attached to it. It's okay. Like that's life, right? Life is supposed to evolve and move, yes. you know, and just try. And as I said, be curious about it and go, Oh, I wonder, I wonder if I try this, what'll happen, you know, instead of going, Oh God, what if it doesn't work? Well, what if it does? Yeah. You know? and, I, and I believe with Netflix, he was told yeah. many times if it wasn't going to work. Like if yeah. I was going to compete with Blockbuster. Yes. Block who? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Ex perfect yeah. example, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Amazing. Yeah. The whole gig economy is just crazy, but like renting out yeah. houses that don't belong to you, kind of thing. Like, yeah, okay, yeah, renting yeah. rooms in in houses that don't belong to you, and cars, yeah. car driving. That's I don't know. It's all very yeah, Uber, etc. Yes. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've gone through a lot. Uh, <laughs> It's all wonderful information. You've got your new programs coming out and we've got the event today that people should definitely go and join and download and yes. check out your program. We've got a new one coming in January or a new contributor thing coming in January. Yes. Where else can people find you? So as I said, we're here on Instagram. Mm. So if you're watching this on Instagram, go to my profile um, and you can follow me there. I would love a follow and uh, make sure as well to have a look at my content. I would love you to do that. And um, if you like it, then leave a, a comment. I would love as well for you to do that because, um, you know, as we know, first of all, comments as well helps with engagement. So that's a tip as well for people. Yeah. Don't just put out content, ask people to comment on it. But also what I like to do with my content as well is give people a piece of action or ask them a question to get them involved and get them thinking so you'll notice that on my content and um, but also yeah and um, download the free guide as you mentioned earlier on it's really going to help you with a being on video if you're really stuck on that and b also the selling side of it as well you know and they're so simple these things in fact i think the three things that are in there aren't even 
on and even social media related so that would show you how easy it is to do this right and yeah. um, so they would be the ways to get in contact and yeah of course if you want to send me an email that's also okay um, I'm at hello at and um, I would love to hear from you and yeah let me know where you are on your entrepreneurial journey where you are in your visibility journal as well, journey and of course if you need help I would absolutely love to help you get your amazing business out there and then where, where do we find the uh, video audit audit the video <laughs> audit is also on my instagram actually if you go to the link and um, it's in that link tree link there as well and you can just um, book in the, the video audit there as well if you want to yeah uh, it has been lovely chatting with you and uh, i really wish you a very happy christmas and a wonderful new year and all the best for the rest of the year and yeah. thank you so much this it's been so great chatting to you, Victoria. Uh, we're definitely going to have to do this again because I really feel the two of us, <laughs> we have a lot to share, don't we? Yes, we do, yeah. I think we could go on for hours. <laughs> I think so as well. Yeah. But yeah, thank you so much. And I really hope this was um, helpful and formative and um, hopefully inspiring as well. Hopefully it's inspiring yeah. people to take action. And in fact, actually, I would just maybe like to leave on that. I would love people to, you know, maybe tell us what their biggest takeaway was from this. Um, and also maybe what piece of action they're going to take from this today. Something that might be a little bit of a stretch, but that's going to help them to be a bit more visible. And um, Or if they haven't been selling, maybe they're going to sell something today and let people know about their offers. So I'd love to hear that as well, if people would like to leave that, that comment for Great. us below. Great. Thanks, Tony. <laughs> Thanks, Victoria. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Bye. Bye. <laughs>